The Democratic Party is openly promoting degeneracy. There's no other way to put it. And so I'm going to share with you a video that just has been surfacing and going viral recently of Kamala Harris's recent rally, campaign rally in Atlanta, where she had a rapper named Megan the Stallion be like the opening headline event of this whole rally, trying to draw a big crowd. And what you're going to see happen in this performance to me is not only showing that we are not moving as a country in a more progressive direction, but a regressive direction. And I'm also going to explain to you why what we're seeing happen here at a political level isn't just political, isn't just cultural, isn't just, you know, a, a, an interest of what your entertainment preference is. What we're seeing happen right now is spiritual. And this type of thing has been happening for thousands of years. I'm going to show you directly in the Bible where we see this sort of thing happen. But then stick around to the end because there is an absolutely amazing video of a pastor who absolutely, he just, in the best way possible, he absolutely torches what we're seeing happen on the far left and what's happening and being promoted and celebrated in the culture. So I'm going to share this with you right now. And I'm going to give you some comments. Hey. By the way, like completely honestly, like as much as you'd think this is a video because it's just a political rally that should be open to everybody, families, parents, kids. I would tell you right now, like if, if you got younger kids, I just I wouldn't show them what I'm about to show you. But this was open for all to see at this recent Kamala Harris rally. So if you want to like put your Hands over their eyes. Do that now. Hey, hey. Yeah. Body crazy, curvy, play. Yeah, yeah. Body crazy, curvy, play. Look at how I body that. Ate it up and gave it back. Yeah, you look good, but they still want to know. This is crazy to me. Have you ever seen that movie Idiocracy, by the way? I'm going to see if I can just pull up an image of this. So this is a comedy about how how dumb humanity becomes over time to the point where we're like we're voting for people for just the most the stupidest, most bizarre things. And what's so crazy about this movie is that it was it was made to be a comedy and yet it seems like we're living it in real life right now. That This is going to be what is going to draw people to make a vote because nobody, ha nobody has any sense of what's really happening in the world right now. Nobody knows how to vote according to policy. So what are you going to do? You're going to have a bunch of women tweet, uh, twerking on stage to hopefully pull people to vote. I'm present when I'm... What we talking about over here, y'all? Hey, if you love your party, let me hear you make some noise. And if you want to keep loving your party, ladies, let me hear you make some noise. Oh hey. If you love your body, we know what that's talking about. Your body, my body, my choice, being able to sacrifice children on the altar of convenience. That's what that's what's being argued for. Body crazy, curvy, wake me. Yeah, yeah. Body crazy, curvy, wake me. Yeah, yeah. All right, enough of that. This is this is what politics has come to. This is what people are... I'll tell you this. The reason why they're putting this in front of their voters is because this is what people want. This is the appetite of our culture right now. This, to me, is a thermometer that shows us the spiritual temperature of what's happening in the culture right now. I want to share with you, though, why what we're seeing happen right here isn't just like, oh my gosh, this party has completely lost their mind, or maybe this is just a cultural trend, and this is like, this is the way of the times. No, what we're seeing happen is something that the Bible would say, there's nothing new under the sun. Let me read for you a story from First Current, uh, First Kings chapter 16. This whole section of scripture is talking about the history of the nations of Israel and Judah, and all of the kings that are raised up during these times. But what's amazing is that these kings who were given this land and given this covenantal promise by God 
one by one, they all just they, they just completely throw the country in a ditch because they give themselves over to pagan worship. I'm going to share with you the, a quick story about this king named Ahab. It's only a few verses, so just buckle up. First Kings 16, verse 29. Ahab, son of Omri, began to rule over Israel in the 38th year of King Asa's reign in Judah. He reigned in Samaria 22 years, but Ahab, son of Omri, did what was evil in the Lord's sight, even more than any of the kings before him. And as though it was it were not enough to follow the sinful example of Jeroboam, he married Jezebel. Pay attention to that name. He married Jezebel, the daughter of King Ethbal of the Sidonians, and he began to bow down in worship of Baal. So let me explain this for you in layman's terms. King Ahab, Israelite king, is so passive that, first of all, he goes outside of God's best, marries somebody that he wasn't supposed to marry, who was, who was worshiping foreign foreign gods, marries her, marries this, this influential woman in his life named Jezebel. Pay attention now. And he begins to bow down in worship of Baal. He's supposed to be the leader, y'all. He's not only supposed to be the leader of Israel. He's supposed to be the leader of his household. And he begins to abdicate his leadership to Jezebel. And Jezebel begins to influence him to worship these false gods. First, Ahab built a temple and an altar for Baal, who's basically, he's basically worshiping Satan. I want you to understand this. Any false god that you're going to worship, you're basically basically worshiping Satan in Samaria. Then he set up an Asherah pole, and he did more to provoke the anger of the Lord, the God of Israel, than any of the other kings of Israel before him. So, okay, so what's happening here? So you have Ahab, passive king, marries Jezebel, who is a manipulator, and is ha- causing her husband to worship these false gods to the point where he sets up an Asherah pole. What is an Asherah pole? I'll show you a quick picture of an Asherah pole. An Asherah pole, to kind of summarize what this was, this was of a way to worship these, this foreign pagan god, this Canaanite god, and this was the god of goddess, I should say, of fertility. And the way that people would worship this god was in one way they were doing sexual rituals. They had temple prostitutes. In other words, they were provoking and promoting sexual immorality of the people in order to win favor with this God so that they could increase in fertility, increase in prosperity, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. So isn't it interesting? Do you think it's interesting that we have, number one, we have a president right now who is not currently leading the country because of his physical condition. We have a woman that he's partnered with, specifically Kamala Harris, is stepping in to take over. And this is the spirit behind what this political campaign represents. Not just promoting immorality with with transgenderism and sexual ambiguity and that completely destroying the nuclear family and also promoting baby deletion for crying out loud. Not only is it happening at the political level, but this is now what our culture is celebrating. This is how they're trying to win votes. My friends, this is nothing new and we are not progressing as a culture. When we vote for this stuff, we are regressing. We are going back in the dark ages. And for anybody here who's trying to say, Oh cap, you're just worshiping the Republican party. I got my own qualms with the Republican party, but I will say there is a stark difference between what one party is promoting openly and what the other party is promoting openly. I want to hear what you think about this in the comments though, because to me, this is the type of stuff that we need to be talking about more openly. For people to say, oh, Christian, Christianity, spirituality, keep the church out of politics. The reality is is that politics runs downstream from culture. And culture runs downstream from what we worship, what we put our worth and our value into. And when we have departed, when we depart from worshiping the one true God and following his ways, Politics is just going to run downstream from that. Politics is merely legislating the values that we believe in. And so we enter the the world of politics because we want to contend for biblical values that, that promote human flourishing for everybody, even for those that don't believe in God. That's the beautiful thing. 
I want you to get your eyes open, though, to what's happening in the culture, what's happening in the political world, because this this spirit, never mind the fact that the border is completely open, never mind the fact that we're in an economic crisis right now, never mind the fact that we're on the cusp of World War III, this is what this party cares about. This is what they've been running on. This is what they've been promoting. This is why on Easter Sunday, they're not celebrating the resurrection of Jesus. They're celebrating Transgender Visibility Day. This is this is their platform, y'all. And thankfully, I, even though I feel like not enough pastors are speaking up about this, thankfully there is a pastor who's been very vocal about this, or at least recently. I just saw this video, and uh, it moved me. I want to share with you how this pastor is speaking up about what's going on right now. I can't for a party that is for all kind of sexual perversions. I can't do it. I can't vote for a party that's going to accept transgenders going into women's restroom. I can't do it. That's a man of God right there. That's a man of God right there. That's a man of God right there. I'm telling you, man, this is, this is what we need, man. We need pastors who are willing to preach the unadulterated truth in love, in grace, with compassion, not out of pride, not out of arrogance, but with clarity and conviction nonetheless. I can't go with a party that wants to cut little girls' breasts off to make them boys. I can't go with a party that says you can be a boy today and a girl tomorrow. I can't do it. I can't. Let me know where this church is at, by the way. I want to I want to visit. I want to visit and worship with, with these amazing people. That's incredible. I can't support a party that wants to remove God from its party platform. You in trouble when the nation forgets God. I can't follow a party that wants to sexualize our children in school, put drag queens in front of them, reading them little children's stories. Preach now. Preach now. Preach now. I can't support a party that wants to take the rights of parents away. Preach now. In California right now, parents are being arrested because they won't go along with the sexualization of their children. This is what's at stake, But there are many parents that are compromised. Y'all got to make a decision. Mm. It's either God or the devil. Mm. I can't vote. It's either God or the devil. (sighs) Important. Important for us to pay attention to. Important. This, these are really critical times, and my encouragement to you in these days. I hope I, you know this is this is truly a place of encouragement for me. I genuinely mean this. With the amount of darkness that's elevating, with the amount of confusion that's elevating, I think people, even people that would normally buy into this stuff, I think there's enough people who are saying, you know what, this is getting strange. Is there another solution? This is the time for the church to shine. This is the time for the people of Jesus Christ to stand up and say, you know what, enough is enough. We're going to preach the word. We're not going to be afraid of getting canceled. We're not going to be afraid of losing our jobs. God will reward the bold in this season, I'm telling you. Again, with love and compassion. We don't need a bunch of people with pitchforks and torches tearing down the world. There's other religions that do that. Okay, I'm not going to put them on blast on this video. That's not what we're called to do as the people of God. We're, we're called to set the world on fire, all right, but it's a different fire. It's the fire of the Holy Spirit. We're called to preach the truth in these days for the word of God, the good news, the gospel, is the power of God unto salvation sets people free. So I want to encourage you, be, be someone that's willing to share the truth in these days. Don't be afraid. Don't be afraid to share the truth in love. Share it from a place of humility, but share the truth nonetheless because... Love without truth is a lie. Amen.
You can say amen. Say amen in the comments. If you're in a place right now where you're thinking, man, the world's getting dark and I don't know where I stand before God and my relationship with him, I have another video at the end of this one I want you to watch. It's going to give you some clarity. I also have some Bible studies. Go check those out. If you enjoyed this video, please consider subscribing for more. I'm on a mission right now to take back media from the devil and reveal the glory of God on every glowing screen. It's time that we flip the culture upside down for the kingdom of God because Jesus is coming back very soon. Amen. God bless you guys. Thanks so much for watching. I'll see you on all in the next video. Take care.